Hello and welcome. We begin with the latest on the intensifying rivalry for influence over Africa between two of the world's superpowers, the United States and China. As a part of his term's first and only visit to sub-Saharan Africa, meant to counter China, U.S. President Joe Biden met with his Angolan counterpart, João Lorenzo, in Luanda. Biden pledged lasting engagement on Africa's own terms. He reiterated that the United States was all in on Africa, something he also stated during a U.S.-Africa summit in Washington in 2022. The U.S. president also announced more than $1 billion in humanitarian assistance to Africa. You've heard me say it before, Mr. President. The United States is all in on Africa. All in on Africa. And uh, I think uh, a testament to that assertion I've made to you and I saw you and I've made publicly you know, before. You've heard me say it before, but the United States is all in, all in Angola. We've already, my administration alone, has invested over $3 billion in Angola thus far. The future of the world is here in Africa, in Angola. The United States continues to be the world's largest provider of humanitarian aid and development assistance. And that's going to increase. You know, that's the right thing for the wealthiest nation in the world to do. And today, I'm announcing over $1 billion in new humanitarian support for Africans displaced from homes by historic droughts and food insecurity. Joe Biden is the first U.S. president to be visiting Angola, and he said he is very proud of the fact. The American president also toured a slavery museum in Angola and spoke about slavery being his country's original sin. Gentlemen, as you know, I'm in the final weeks of my presidency. You don't have to clap for that. You can if you want. But I wanted to come to Angola. Although I've been chairman of the African American Subcommittee for a long time, I'd never made it to Angola. Because although I don't know exactly what the future will hold, I know the future runs through Angola, through Africa. I mean it sincerely. I'm not kidding. The partnership between Angola and the United States also extends to supporting peace and security in this region and beyond. President Lorenzo, and I want to thank him for his leadership in mediation and regional conflicts. I also want to thank him for Angola's speaking out against Russia's unprovoked war against Ukraine. It matters. It matters when leaders speak out. The undertaking of this state visit to Angola on the eve of Angola's commemoration of 50 years of national independence will go down in the history of both countries as the first of an American president to set foot on Angolan soil. This not only buries a past part of our relationship, during which, in the context of the Cold War, we were not always aligned, but also marks an important turning point in our relationship, which will undoubtedly gain a new dynamic from today onward. But many have questioned Biden's decision to make only one stop in his Africa tour in the oil-rich Angola, leaving out Washington's traditional allies like Kenya. The U.S. president's brief Africa visit is aimed at countering China. In Angola, Biden is showcasing a major infrastructure project. The U.S. is backing a new 1,300-kilometer-long railway project that aims to divert critical minerals away from China. The project, which is partly funded with a U.S. loan, links the resource-rich Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia to the Angolan port of Lobito on the Atlantic Ocean. The Lobito project will offer a fast and efficient route for exports to the West. It's called the Lobito Corridor. We're building railroad lines from Angola to the port of Lobito in Zambia and the DRC. And ultimately, all the way to the Atlantic from the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean. It'll be the first transcontinental railroad in Africa and the biggest American rail investment outside of America. At stake are vast supplies of minerals like copper and cobalt. These minerals that are a key component in batteries and electronics are found in the Democratic Republic of Congo. But competition to access resources in the region has been intensifying in recent years. And the United States' project, which is aimed at countering Chinese investments in Africa, appears feeble. This is because Chinese investments and influence have far outpaced that of the U.S. 
Beijing has poured billions of dollars across Africa into infrastructure projects under President Xi Jinping's prized Belt and Road Initiative. While Joe Biden made the American pitch for Africa in Angola, Chinese President Xi Jinping already had his trump card ready, and he played it just at the right time. Beijing initiated a free trade policy with 33 African countries. Under this, China will grant duty-free access to 100% of products from 33 of its African partners. The policy, which was announced by Xi Jinping at the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation in September, aims to improve industrial cooperation between China and its African partners. The Chinese president had also pledged to increase its support to Africa with $51 billion in funding. Additionally, China also pledged to triple the number of infrastructure projects it has in Africa. The United States has done little to advance ties with African nations. While it lost several commercial opportunities to China, the strategic and security ones were lost to Russia. Now, earlier this year, the U.S. lost a major spy base in Niger, leaving it without a military foothold in the Sahel, which has become a hotspot of Islamist terrorism. Niger, along with other West African countries, including the junta-ruled Mali and Burkina Faso, dumped the West and turned to Russia for security. While Joe Biden seems to have taken a fresh step to counter China's influence in Africa, it remains to be seen whether the next U.S. president, Donald Trump, who will be in the White House in a few weeks, would carry this forward or tear the plan apart. For more on this, we have with us Luke Anami, a journalist who is joining us live from Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Um, I, I just Luke, to find how out, significant uh, is uh, Xi Jinping's decision? Right. Let me jump right in with the questions. How significant is Xi Jinping's de- decision to implement a free trade policy with 33 African countries? What implications does it have for China's economic and political influence on the continent? Uh, thank you so much for welcoming me to this uh, program. Uh, the first thing I think is uh, going to be important is uh, granting that three countries uh, free trade will be very significant in actually countering the U.S. Uh, uh, influence in Africa. Uh, and likely the the fact that if China goes ahead and implements what it has actually promised, then this is going to be a very, very, very uh, good uh, game changer because uh, at first, AGOA, which is uh, the U.S. Uh, flagship project in uh, in Africa, has about uh, three sub-Saharan countries. Yeah. And of course, it has been very significant. But at the moment, China has not yet been op- able to do that. So if this decision by the U, uh, the Chinese president is going to be, then it's going to have serious implications in terms of trade. More Africans will want to trade with China directly uh, compared to the previous years. Mm. Right. So with President Biden's $1 billion humanitarian assistance and his meeting with the Angolan president, do you feel that this is a meaningful step toward regaining U.S. influence in Africa, or does it simply pale in comparison to China's long-term strategic investments? Um, I I think, first of all, uh, when we talk about one billion humanitarian assistance, he has not specified exactly that amount, what is it going to do in terms of the humanitarian? Is it going to do something on food? Uh, what about, uh, is it health? So if you look at that and you look at the humanitarian pledges, the U.S. government has been pledging and making pledges most of the time, but it has not been able to follow up and see how much that money has actually been utilized by the countries that it has uh, actually uh, lent that money. So um, it may go in a way of influencing uh, Africa, but China's uh, strategic, long-term strategic investments uh, have proven to be more critical. Uh, looking at Chinese investments, you'll see that they have in, invested infrastructure, and you can see the infrastructure is there available. You can see it. You can see the roads. You can actually see the railway construction. 
and uh, it has a lot of discounts. But the U.S. has has so many stringent measures attached to their loans and their grants and their assistance. So at the end of the day, uh, if you mm. compare the two countries in terms of uh, their influence in Africa, China seems to be quite ahead of the U.S. until uh, the U.S. comes to terms that mm. it needs to actually implement these projects and see that these projects are benefit the Africans. It will be very difficult for them to actually turn right. the tide against China. Right. Let's go a little bit deeper there. You have mentioned that China has managed to outpace the U.S. in building influence in Africa. In your view, what would Washington need to do differently to compete effectively with Beijing's approach? The U.S. has uh, needs to come out clearly in terms of uh, the kind of assistance it offers to African countries. I'm talking about when you lend money, you must oversee the projects, make sure that the projects are actually being done. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, uh, loans and uh, grants have so many stringent measures uh, to an extent that it takes so long for them to be implemented. Looking at Kenya, for instance, the, the kind of mm -hmm. roads that China has actually been able to construct in less than five years, it is very significant compared to what America has been giving money, but you don't see those uh, measures. So what the U.S. government needs to do is that they need not to tie the development projects with uh, issues like democracy, uh, issues like uh, um, right. stringent measures on how to utilize the loans. They need to give Africans a chance to do uh, whatever they need to do with the money yes. in terms of infrastructure. And that's what is missing from the U.S. Uh, government yes. uh, initiatives in Africa. Right. Luke, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa and for your analysis there. Thank you so much, Alison.